Is employee turnover a challenge that you're facing right now? Are you worried about who will show up at shift change? Or perhaps you've got a reliable crew, but you just aren't sure how to motivate your team to not just go through the motions, but to actually care about the work that they're doing every day? Well, if that's you, you are not alone. And you're also in the right place because as we draw near to the one year anniversary of the Up Level Dairy podcast, we're bringing back one of the most highly downloaded episodes from the past 12 months, where a young dairy manager, Jared Dubengeiser from Milk Sources Rosendale Dairy, shared how he up leveled the culture among 52 people and how he took employee turnover down to zero for more than six continuous months. And when Jared and I had this conversation last year, he was just 26 years old. Hear the story today on the Up Level Dairy Podcast for dairy farm owners, managers, and advisors who are committed to profitability, sustainability, and excellence. I'm your host, Peggy Coffeen, and it's my mission to up level your skill set and your mindset so you can be a top performer in the dairy business. This episode is sponsored by Up Level Dairy Podcast founding partner Adiseo, a global leader in nutritional solutions and premier provider of rumen protected methionine. For dairy producers who want to optimize milk production, capture more value from components, and maintain the health of their high-performing herd. And now, hear how Jared has turned the tables on turnover and up-leveled the culture at Rosendale Dairy. Take me back to when you would have first come into that management role at Rosendale about a year and a half ago or so, and you stepped on to that dairy and that new position with a vision for the culture you wanted to create there for the people, for the employees, for all 52 people milking 8,500 cows for that operation. Describe that vision of the culture you wanted to create and lead at Rosendale Dairy. Yeah, definitely. For me, I really just want it to be an atmosphere where people are encouraged to excel and excited to give their best every day. I really want all the employees to see it as an opportunity for growth and not just growth in their work here and their career here, but I want them to be able to take what they learn here and through our culture, have a better personal growth, whether it's with their family, whether it's down the road, if they're doing something else and another career, I want us to have a really big impact on every single employee as much as we can to better all their future. Ah, Jared, that is a very noble and mature outlook because here you were, what, 24 years old coming yeah. into this role? Yeah, 24 you were, but you could see that was the vision you wanted to create, a vision where there was an atmosphere that encouraged people to excel in what they did, an excitement for living out their best every single day when they're on the job, and an intrinsic drive to see opportunities for growth for employees as individuals so that whether they stayed with you on the team there or they went on to do something else, that they were a better version of themselves. And that is an incredible vision for a culture to create. Uh, but uh, I know one thing, Jared, that you shared with me in the past was that there were a couple of key things that happened in your path and management that really not just inspired you to take the action to, to make that vision reality, but really empowered you to do so. Share with us a little bit about what some of those triggers were that helped you to take that vision and make it the reality at Rosendale Dairy. Yeah. So just stepping back a little bit, I will say that going into the role, I did have this vision. I did have this desire to do that. But it doesn't happen overnight, especially when you're coming into a new position, new employees. These our employees have a new manager. Everything's totally different. So it, it was something that I needed to constantly work on and grow and develop. So I definitely didn't have it all figured out. And it's and I still don't. I'm still learning, but it definitely took really persistent effort to work on it. And like you had asked a couple of things. We had a speaker at one of our manager meetings. Jeff Cortez is his name. And he wrote a book about giving your employees crap is actually the name of it. And that's an acronym, not actual crap. It's care, respect, appreciation, and praise. And I think the key to that is you really have to know your people. People stay because appreciation matters and they recognize that and they see that. And I think the other thing too is with the appreciation and praise, when we reach goals, 
we acknowledge that and we give, we celebrate that success. And I think that's huge because the guys and girls, they hear, they, we don't want to put these goals in front of them and they reach them and then, oh, we've got another goal. So when we reach that goal, we celebrate that success that they did with them. And I think that's been huge, huge, huge part of it. Yeah. So dig into that a little bit more, Jared, for us. What does a celebration of success look like? Yeah. So they're very motivated by food and um, just getting together and having camaraderie. And that also in itself helps the culture. So often we do cookouts during the summer and this time of year we will buy pizza and just during the break time at lunch, we have that, we do that all together instead of, and it doesn't sound like much, it's nothing special, but be intentional about it is super important because you can easily say, oh, it's not special. There's nothing all that great about it, but they really do appreciate it. And just acknowledging that, that success that they've had is huge for them. Yeah. And that goes right back into the, the CRAP acronym, right? The appreciation and acknowledgement and showing that you care. And what you just described is the way that you celebrate those victories and celebrate those goals. But there are things that you're also doing every single day, the, the little things that exemplify and show employees that you care and that you have respect for them and that you appreciate them. So what are some of the, the little things that you intentionally incorporate into your daily activities and how you lead from the top down to, to bring that as, into your culture? More recently, I'd say within the last six to eight months, the parlor manager and I, we sat down after we were having some turnover and we we're like, man, this is, it's costly, it's frustrating, it's exhausting. The performance isn't where it needs to be. And so what we saw that we really needed to do was connect with each and every employee on a deeper level. And so we really got to know all of our guys. And after we got done with stuff out in the barn in the morning, every day, we're intentional about going to every single employee and just having a little conversation with them. It could be about what the job, what they're doing. Really what we want to do is get to know them outside of here. We want to get to know their family. We want to get to know their background, what they enjoy doing, just being on an equal level with them and really just getting to know them a lot better. And just for example, we got to know that one of our employees had a son and the next week we're able to say to him, Hey, how's your son doing? Just little stuff like that, that if you aren't intentional about getting to know them, they don't feel that connection. And I think that's gone a long way to, okay, this isn't somewhere where I just come to show up in the morning. It's a long day of work. And then I go home. No, so this is somewhere where we come, people care about me and I enjoy doing what I'm doing. And it's helped us a lot. Yeah. So those little touches, those conversations, and I'm sure, Jared, in, in your role and in the role of your team members, it, this is a 24-7 business. And it can be really easy to get caught up in the whirlwind that dairy management is. But you made it an intentional effort to have these conversations, to have these outreaches to employees on an individual level to get to know them. It sounds simple, right? Almost too simple. But what over time have those little touches and those intentional efforts led to as far as results? When we discuss it, we make it sound like, oh, you just do this and here's your result. You have to be very intentional about it day to day. And like I said previously, we don't have it all figured out, but we're really trying to be intentional about making an effort to create a great culture here at Rosendale. And because of that, we've seen um, very little to nearly no turnover in at least six months. And because of that, you see so many things improve day by day, whether it's just overall cleanliness of the dairy and the parlor, we see better parlor throughput. Because of that, you're seeing better milk production, better milk quality. 
And there's so much that that low turnover contributes to and has a huge impact on. And just the lower level of stress on myself and parlor manager, it makes my life a lot better too. Yeah. You, you probably can ask quantify what that is, but it's, it's worth it. Yeah. So Jared, when we talk about that turnover piece and uh, a lot of dairies, if you ask, they have what they would describe as their ideal level of success with employee turnover. And oftentimes what that includes is a really good core group of people, but then maybe an accepted level of turnover at the parlor level. It's really not the case for you guys right now, is it? No, it's not right now. And we definitely have gone through times of more turnover and and entry level positions like parlor positions. We have that core group of employees and we haven't lost any of them. But like you said, in recently past six months or so, we haven't really had any turnover in any position. But I do think that it do, it's something that does come and go, but that's not, we didn't want to accept that. The parlor manager and I, we, we really, we were seeing a lot of that and we didn't want to accept that and say, well, that's just normal. That happens, but shouldn't. We didn't want to accept that, that, that is happening. That's how we got to had to get a little bit creative and super intentional about what we're doing in order to retain those, the newest employee and something that the CEO, Jim Ostrom and always says and asks who's the most important employee. And the answer is the most recently hired employee because they are the employee that we have to really be in, really work hard to show them why this is a great place to be. This is a great place to work. This is somewhere where you can have a great future and great career. But that, that, that employee that enters day one, they have no idea. So that's why we always say that obviously they're all very important, but that's the reason why we say that the, the most recently hired employee is the most important. Yeah. Yeah. And you put that into action every single day. And like you said, it's yielded results. It's yielded results in throughput and parlor efficiency and all of those great measurable things. But at the end of the day, it's made things a little bit easier for you too, as a manager, right? Yeah, it definitely has. And the other thing too, that's nice is so like now, if we hire somebody or more recently hire somebody, you have a group of employees here that have been here for six, eight months, several years. It's not, oh yeah, obviously there's a bunch of turnover here because everybody's new here. They, a lot of it's great because you have the example of, hey, it's very doable. It's a great place to be and look at everybody else. And it, it, that also is something that just builds on top of itself and really helps it out a lot too. Thank you so much for sharing, Jared, how you had this vision for the culture you wanted to establish at Rosendale. And there were these certain things that became your tools and your inspiration to take that vision and make it a reality. But then these action steps that maybe seemed simple, but you did with intention and consistency and how that has yielded some really great results that great for the dairy, great for the operation, but at the heart of it, great for the people and the culture. And kudos to you for taking on that leadership role. This position that you're in as a manager, like it's a tough job. It's intense. It's long hours. I'm sure there's times when it can be really stressful and you could be doing a lot of different things, but you've picked a career that is a lot more challenging than others. So what is it that keeps you in this career as a dairy manager? Yeah, there certainly are days that I have questioned why I am doing what I'm doing, but I think that goes, that's the same for anybody. But first off, I grew up doing this and it's just in me. I love it. It's what I know. It's what I love. But specifically here at Milk Source, for sure, the reason why I do this is are the owners, is Jim, John, and Todd. They really value each and every employee here. They care about every employee. They have a vision for the culture of Milk Source too. And they're very intentional about continuously working on that. 
We have the milk source way of the day where we have and different words that we go through respect. And then we discuss what that means. And every single employee gets that email, a different word every day. And then within our team at the dairy, we discuss it with, so at the parlor group, they'll discuss respect today and the herdsmen, they'll discuss what that respect means to them. And it just creates an environment that is just exceptional. And they, they truly are our three great bosses and they're just great people too. Yeah. Yeah. Incredible businessmen, incredible entrepreneurs, visionaries, but at the core, incredible humans. And you have the opportunity to be a part of their vision being a reality with the culture that they're creating and what a gift it is for you to be a part of that. But ultimately, what a gift back to them that they've been able to attract talent like you, Jared, that are in alignment with those qualities, that vision, the milk source way. And it just all goes back to the things that you've talked about from the very beginning. And that's culture, right? It's the culture that is coming from the top down, but it's also your ability at your site there at Rosendale, where you're overseeing 52 people, 8,500 cows to take that those aspects of that bigger culture and to spread it one by one intentionally to each of the people that's on your team. Now, there are a lot of other people like you that are going to be listening to this podcast, dairy managers doing different things and different levels of their career. But oftentimes, one of the biggest challenges that comes up over and over again in the management conversation are the challenges of managing people. So what is your best nugget of advice to share with other dairy managers when it comes to not just the cow part, but the heart and core of your role of managing people. Yeah, I think that the huge thing with that is investing in yourself, investing in and in growing yourself, investing in learning, learning how to manage people, learning how to deal with conflict. Um, I've done a number of different courses and classes one on servant leadership, just learning what leadership really means and how to connect with, with your employees. I think, like I said, the biggest thing is just investing that time into yourself to learn. But the other thing too, is I will say is it's natural for some and it's not for others. And I think recognizing that is, is key for me. This is the part of the job that I love is building the culture. If I was just out in the barn with one other employee every day, I can tell you right now, I would not be here. I love being, a, I love building a team. I love creating that team and seeing that the results from that. That's the challenge that I enjoy in this position. I do enjoy working with cows. It's what I know. It's what I love doing, but it's really the developing a team, developing a culture that that's the daily challenge that really wakes me up every morning to, to keep going. And when you can get out of bed in the morning, motivated and excited to go after that, that's also the difference between getting up because you're getting phone calls when people aren't showing up and there's issues among employees. And because of these extra things you're doing, the way that you are developing your own leadership skills, you get to be in the spot where you're waking up and your feet hit the ground and you're ready to go and take what you've created there and to continue to develop that into something that's truly great and truly special. And Jared, it's been so fun to hear about your management and this journey you've been on through Milk Source uh, at Rosendale Dairy. As we get close to the end of our conversation here, there's something that's pretty cool about you that I wanna tie into our conversation. And I know you just mentioned how much you love developing teams, but at your heart, you have an affinity for cows and the pretty kind. So you and your family and Milk Source together had a really exciting week in October at World Dairy Expo. Tell us a little bit about how that week went for you guys and your affinity for those pretty show cows. Yeah, I definitely do. They, they, there's a soft spot in my heart for the show cows. We're extremely humbled by the results that we got at, at Expo. Our a cow that we bred, a red cow, red and white cow, 
that we own with Milk Source and Lori Fisher. We she was uh, grand of the red and white show, and then we also had a, a black and white four year old that. That won her class and was honorable mention grand champion at Expo. It's definitely something that also has been a great bond between my dad and my brother. It's something that all three of us are really passionate about and we love doing. And it wouldn't be possible without the partnership that we have with Milk Source. Without them and the care that they have at Milk Source Genetics, it, it just would not be possible. They're second to none. And they just do an incredible job. And we are extremely thankful for the partnership that we have on these cows with them. Congratulations on that victory and uh, on pursuing that part of your passion as well with showing cattle and uh, aligning with your partners at Milk Sources Genetics Division to do that. Um, and as we wrap up here, Jared, we're so grateful for your time and you sharing your talents and insights as a dairy manager. And how I like to close out this podcast is by asking five questions. So these are the up level five, five questions that are designed to provoke your next level of performance. And knowing that what you said earlier about investing in yourself and being a person who's always learning and growing, I'm excited to hear what your responses to these five questions are. And so a short answer questions, pretty simple. First one is, what does success look like to you? For me, on a personal level, it is a successful marriage, growing in, in my faith and just having a rock solid relationship with the family. Um, to me, that's what my personal success outside of work looks like. Up level five, question number two, in three words, how do you want to show up each day? I'd say for me, that's, that's pretty easy. It's what I tried to live by here at the farm and also at home as humble, hungry, and smart. And I want to expand upon that just briefly. It's obviously humble, just admitting to mistakes and with hungry, always eager to learn more, to challenge myself, to grow more. But then the smart one is a little bit confusing because it's not intellectually smart. It's people smart. Um, and that I, I, we've talked about a lot, but it's a core value of mine of, of just being people smart not just with employees, but being people smart with my wife and <laughs> with my family and building those relationships. Humble, hungry, and smart is, and I got that from a book called The Ideal Team Player that I read. So that's, those are definitely the three that, that come to mind. Awesome. Thank you for sharing those. And question number three, who are a couple of the thought leaders or influencers that you follow? I think the main one is Craig Rochelle. He has a leadership podcast. Listen to that a lot. I don't know if he's CEO or owner of Life Church, and he just has incredible knowledge on leadership. I listen to that a lot. And then I have something where I am just getting leadership quotes, but I'm always getting uh, little snippets of Warren Buffett or quotes from them that every day I get an email of just impactful leadership quotes that I'm always trying to keep thinking and growing in that. Awesome. That is great. And question number four, what are the words you live by? A couple of those that I really try to live by is you reap what you sow. And then the other one would be comfort is the enemy of progress. I think both of those for me just really explain whatever effort you're going to put into something, that's what you're going to get out of it. And if you're just comfortable in what you're doing, there, there's a level of comfort that's okay. But if you're not pushing yourself to, to reach your next goal, then progress is just completely stunted. Yeah, that leads right up into our last question of the Up Level 5. And it's this, what is your next personal up level, that area of life that you are looking to take to the next level? First and foremost, it's my marriage. I want to work every day to be the man that my wife fell in love with. And without that, I don't need my job. Nothing else really matters. So to me, that's the first and foremost, most important personal up level that I'm focusing on. 
Oh, Jared, this is fantastic. And sometimes I think we look to people older than us to find wisdom, but I can tell you today that personally, and I think for a lot of our listeners out there, that they have found great wisdom in your words, whether it's just what you shared through the Up Level 5, through your management philosophies, through the way that you have created a vision and a culture and put that into action. We're so grateful and thankful for you to be a part of the Up Level Dairy Podcast. I had a great time and I really appreciate you having me on here. Thank you so much. And with that, thank you for joining us for the Up Level Dairy Podcast. This episode is sponsored by Adiseo, a global leader in nutritional solutions and a premier provider of rumen-protected methionine. For dairy producers who want to optimize milk production, capture more value from their components, and maintain the health of their high-performing herds. And because you know that feed is the greatest expense on any dairy, you probably also want to know how those adjustments to the ration affect your bottom line. Adiseo empowers producers and nutritionists to make informed ration balancing decisions with MilkPay.com. Customizable to your dairy's own data, this profitability calculator puts the power of real-time milk market information in the palm of your hand. Find out how much your latest ration change is really costing you with the free MilkPay app available on iOS and through MilkPay.com. And thank you for joining us for the Up Level Dairy Podcast. Be sure to follow us and receive any new notifications from Up Level Dairy in your inbox at uplevelldairy.com.